Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here, the GMAT Official Guide 2024. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Always make sure the book is in front of you when you're working with me. Today we'll work on some problem that you will find on page number 83. Today is our day number 9. As you can see the very first problem is on the blackboard. I'm going to read the problem to you then I'm going to get out of the frame, pause the video and do it yourself first and then compare your work against the work that we'll do together and do that with every single problem even if I don't remind you. Here we go. We are told that we have a fixed cost of buying a machine. We're going to buy a machine to make something and the fixed cost of buying a machine is 9,900 and with that we're going to make something we are told that each unit costs 65 cents to produce. We are further told that we are going to sold each of these units for $1.20. The question simply is what's the break even point? What's the break even point? Do it yourself. Let's see what we can do. Well, we know our fixed cost. <coughs> fixed cost so in order, in order to find the break-even point, the revenue that we're going to generate has to equal the total cost, which is the fixed cost plus the variable cost. The fixed cost is 9,900. And the variable cost, we are told, each unit costs 65 cents. That's our variable cost. The variable cost is 65 cents per unit. So it's 65 cents per unit, and we're going to sell Q units. And if we're going to sell Q units, since each unit is bringing in $1.20, it's going to be $1.20 times Q is our revenue. That's the simple equation we have to solve. Let's see what we can do, shall we? Let's multiply, let's multiply this entire equation. Let's multiply this entire equation by 100, so we don't have to deal with the decimal of 1.2, 1.65. So this becomes 120Q equals 99 times, I'm going to take these two zeros, and then I add the two zeros because we are multiplying by 100 the whole equation and this becomes 65 Qs. 120 minus 60 would have been 60 so it's 55 Qs equals 99 times 100 times 100. Now we know now we know why, why I separated 99 because now we can divide by 11. So that becomes 5, that becomes 9. Let's divide one more time. This 5 goes away and convert this into a 20. 9 times 20 is 180 times 100, so we need to add the two zeros. There we go. 18,000 units. We'll have to produce 18,000 units before we break even. After that, 18,000 and first unit is where we're going to see the profit. Number 59. The first 18,000 units are simply to recoup the money that we bought, uh, money that we spent on buying the machine. In number 59 we have five quantities A, B, C, D and E 181, 125, 103, 79 and 72. The question simply is A is approximately what percentage greater than D. That's all. A is approximately what percentage greater than D. Do it yourself. Pause the video and do it yourself. Alright, here we go. Since we are looking for approximate value, which is very important, don't, don't waste your time trying to exact calculation. A is what what percentage greater than D? A is 180. I'm going to pretend it 181. I'm going to pretend that it is 180. And D is 80. D is 80. 180 we know is made up of 80. Another 80 that's 160. And then another 20. Well, 80 is 100%. And another 20 is 25%. There we go. Which means 180 must be 125% greater. 125% greater than 80. That's all. Number 60.
number 60 we are told that the tank is one third full right now we have a fuel tank which we know is one third full to which to which we're going to add n liters and as a result of that we are told now now we are told it is seven ninth full and the question simply is the capacity of the tank capacity of the tank is how much what is the capacity of the tank in terms of in terms of n do it yourself well the tank is tank is 7 ninth full now and before it was one third full one third full is same as three ninth which means we filled up the tank by four third or four ninth rather four ninth of its capacity and that four ninth of the capacity that four ninth of the capacity that four ninth of the capacity I'm going to use C for capacity, the 4 ninth of the capacity that it represents because it was it is 7 ninth full before it was 1 third full the difference is 4, four ninth which means we fill it up by 4 ninth which is n liters we just have to solve for n, uh, we just have to solve for C and C is simply 9 times n, 9 over 4 n voila, that's all that's how simple it is there's nothing to it let's do number 61 In number 61 we are told that we are going to make a couple of investments. We are going to make a couple of investments for a period of one year. So we are going to invest some money for only one year. We are told that we are going to put $8,000 at 6% simple interest. It's going to on us just simply uh, simple interest. And then we're going to take additional ten thousand dollars plus a ten thousand dollars, which we're going to invest at eight percent, which is going to pay us compound interest. I hope I spelled compound correctly, which I did not. I don't know why there is extra extra U in there. Compounded semi annually. The question simply is what is our interest income? How much did we earn in interest on these two investments during the course of one year? Do it yourself. Here we go. So we have two investments. This is very straightforward. We're simply going to earn 6% of 8,000. So that part is done. Plus we're going to earn the second part. We have to slow down. And I did not leave myself enough room there. I wanted to write it all in one, all in one line. Let me, let me rewrite it. I don't want to write it in two lines. So we have 8,000 times 6% plus we have ten thousand dollars which is going to give us eight percent percentages are always expressed when you make an investment percentages are always expressed on annual terms that's why they're called per annum you don't have to be told you're not going to get eight percent the first six months and another eight percent the next six months it's per annum which means because it is compounded annually we have to understand that in the first six months you're going to earn four percent Let's figure out this part. 
8, 6 of 48, so that's 480. That's very straightforward. 4% of 100, 4% 4 of 100 is 4, 4% 4 of 1000 is going to be 40, so this is 400. Now at the end of 6 months when we get the $400, what happens to that $400? That $400 is compounded, which is why it's called compound interest. We're going to earn, we're going to earn interest on that $400, 400 additional dollars the following 6 months, which means the next 6 months we no longer have $10,000 in the account, we have, have $10,400 on which we're going to earn 4%. So that's the second period. We already know 4% of 10,000 is 400. Now we have to figure out 4% of 400. 4% 4 of 400. 4% 4 of 400, 4% of... Four percent of one hundred is four. Four percent of four hundred is going to be sixteen. That's what we're going to earn. That's all there is. So four hundred, four hundred, four hundred. That's twelve hundred. Twelve hundred, and then eighty, and then sixteen. There we go. Looks like we're going to earn twelve hundred and ninety-six dollars. Looks like we're going to earn twelve hundred and ninety-six dollars. Let's do number 62. In number 62 we are told that we are a farmer and we have seven, 350 apple trees. We are going to harvest 350 Oh, sorry, we don't have 350 trees, we are told that we harvested 350 apples. We went through our orchard and we took out all the apples, we get the idea and we have 350 apples. We are told that X trees, X of these trees in our orchard, X trees, each yielded 10 apples. There were X number of trees in our orchard, each one of them gave us 10 apples. The question simply is, what fraction, what fraction from these X trees? What fraction of our total harvest of 350 apples came from these 10 trees which each yielded 10 apples. Do it yourself. It's quite straightforward. Since we have X trees and this part, this is not part of this thing, this is separate. This is the question. We have X trees and X, each of these X trees, X trees yielded X trees each yielded 10 apples. Since each of them is yielding 10 apples, we have 10 X apples out, out of a total of 350. That's all. That's our answer. X over 35. The question was what fraction of our total yield came from these X trees? The answer is 135th of it. Rather, X over, one X over 35th. Number 63. That I was correct what I said. One thirty-fifth of our yield came from this X, X trees. 63. In 63 we are told that we have a fraction. In a fraction we are told The denominator is 16 greater than the numerator. We also told that the fraction equals 80%. Fraction represents the quantity which is 80%, 8 over 10. The question simply is what's the denominator? What's the denominator in order for this to be true? 
Again, do it yourself. While I take a sip. What, need, what, we, what we need to keep in mind in questions like these is always be cognizant of what is being asked. You must always be cognizant of what is being asked because way we, the way we're going to set up here, here's our fraction, a numerator or the denominator and since we are told that the denominator is 16 more than a numerator, I'm going to call the numerator x, the denominator is going to be x plus 16. So when we finish finding the x, which is going to be the numerator, we have to remember to add 16 to it because we are interested in denominators. This is the guy we are interested in. So obviously if we just find the value of x, that's going to be one of the answer choices. Now this quantity we are told equals 8 tenth, 80 percent. That's all. We just have to simplify it. Before we do anything, let's just convert this into a 4 fifth. So 5 times x has to equal 4 times x plus 16 times 4. There we go, we're done. x equals 16 times 4, which is 64. That, that, which makes sense. Which makes sense because if we were to add 16 to it, we're going to get 80. So what we have is 64 over 80. And we reduce it by, divide by top and bottom by 8, we're going to get 8 and a 10. There we go, you see? 8 10. Number 65. That was 6. Number 64. Don't waste your time in a real exam doing what the last part I did, it wasn't necessary. You should have confidence in your work. 64. We are told that we are spending two dollars or other. We are told that we are going to get paid two dollars for every unit we make up to 40 units up to 40 units. If we make any additional unit for each additional unit. For each additional unit that we make above and beyond 40 on a given day we're going to get 250 for that unit. So we're working on our assembly line, we're putting something together, we're making something for the first unit for the first 40 units in a, in a given day, our boss is going to pay us two dollars for each unit that we make. Anything above 40, we're going to get 250. We are also told that we made at least 30 units on each of the two days. Apparently we're working only for two days and we are told that on each of these two days we made at least 30 units. Lastly we are told that we were paid a total of $180 for these two days. The question is what is the greatest possible number of units he could have made in one day. So this guy is putting together units He's getting two dollars per two dollars per unit, up to forty units. Anything above forty, he gets two fifty. We are told that he is going to work for two days, and for each of these two days, he made at least thirty units on a given day. We are told that at the end of at the end of two days, he was he was paid one hundred eighty dollars. The question simply is, what is the greatest possible units he could have put together in one day? Do it yourself. Pause the video. Do it yourself.
Let's see what we can do. So we're going to work two days. Believe it or not, believe it or not, day one and day two. Day one and day two. That's how, that's how the universe works. And because you want one of these two days to be as great as possible, our job is to make one of these two days as little as possible, as small as possible. And the smallest number of units, the, the lowest number of units that we can make in any given any given day of these two days is 30 because we are told that he made at least 30 units in a given day. So let's let's make this one 30 units. And let's just make this one 40 plus x units. Why 40 plus x? Because we're going to get different amount for 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 the first 40 dollar 40 units and then we're going to get another 250 for the x units. Now we have to set it up. Since we're getting since we're getting two dollars per unit, here we're going to get sixty dollars. For these forty these for, for these forty units, we're going to get eighty dollars. And then for these x one, we're going to get two fifty times x. I'm going to erase this dollar sign. And that's to, once we solve for x, that's going to give us the greatest number of units that we can assemble together on the second day, given the fact that we have fulfilled the requirement that we have to make at least thirty when we show up for work. And total we have paid is 180. It's a very simple straightforward equation. Let's see what we can do, shall we? Well, let's simplify it first before we do anything else. I see 80 here. Let's subtract 80 from both sides so that becomes 100. I see 60 here. Let's subtract 60 from both sides so that becomes 40. There we go. It's a very simple equation. 40 has to equal 2.5 times x which means 25x must equal 400, divide both sides by 25, 100 is made up of 425, so it's 16, there we go. x equals 16, but that is not our answer. That is not our answer, as I, as I already warned you in the beginning. Let me see if 16 is one of the answer choices. Well, luckily 16 is not one of the answer choices. That is not our answer. Our answer is that on the second day, we must have made 40 plus 16. We made 56 units on the second day. That is the greatest possible number of units we could have made on the second day, given the constraint. The constraint being that we had to make 30 on the first day. That was the that was the very last problem on the page. I hope I did not leave out anything. It seems like it went quite fast, but that was it. That was the very last problem on the on, on, on that page, and therefore that brings us to the end of the show. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, bye now.